Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME, Section 8, Division 1, Subsection A, UG 32. Procedure for, Thickness Calculation of, Ellipsoidal Head. We have, all these courses available, on our Thinkific platform. To learn, more about these courses, register with the link given, in the description. So now, the minimum required thickness, if you want to find out of the head after forming, see, whenever you are calculating thickness for addition, you have to be very clear that too much forming is involved. Why? Because if you see this knuckle portion, the smaller the radius, higher the stresses. Yes, but what we, cal what we calculate in ASME with terms of strain. Further, I want the exact term. Lower the radius, oh, discontinuous stresses will be there. So smaller the radius. Actually, for the smaller the radius, Himanshu, that uh, stresses will be lower, elongation. Uh, so what we call Rajshikhar, the full, full word, fiber elongation. So, smaller the radius of forming, higher the fiber elongation. We calculate that, right? Extreme fiber elongation. Absolutely right, Imanshu. So, smaller the radius, higher the fiber elongation. If higher fiber elongation, that means there will be, we are stretching it. No? Fiber elongation, in very simple terms, stretching. Too much stressing, stretching. So, that means reduction in thickness. Yes, PFST may be required, may not be required. That will depend upon the fiber elongation. But right now, what we want to focus is that once we have a smaller radius, there there will be thinning chances happening. So when we talk about shell, whatever required thickness we calculate from the formula, we don't add any thinning allowance. Okay, because in normal forming, typically in shell, it is not expected. But when we form dishen, okay, because this knuckle is very sharp, we get some thinning happening at knuckle. Okay, that is the part where normally the thinning happens. So if I get a required thickness, that required thickness uh, is after the forming, right? whatever thickness we get as per formula that will give us the final thickness okay so i have to select a nominal thickness such that even after forming even after the reduction of thickness because of forming the thickness will be more than you know what is required for that shape are you able to get it Yes, Satya, absolutely right. So, nominal thickness should be selected such that I we so what is important here? What is the what is one factor which is you know coming and which is unknown to us while selecting the nominal thickness? Thinning, right? So we need to as a designer, do we know what is the thinning which may happen? for a different thickness and diameter. We assume, right? And based on normally 10%, Subhan is absolutely right. So, but that is assumption, right? 10 to 12. Generally, you don't take more than 12 or more than 10 Akash. So, because for higher thickness, even it becomes lower. So it will keep on reducing for higher thickness because for 50, if you say 50 mm by thickness, then 10% is 5 mm. Generally, it does not happen. No, it keeps on reducing after the thickness is very high. Okay, but what I'm uh, what point I want to make is uh, that uh, that's an assumption, right? So now the actual fabricator of that addition will be knowing what based on his experience, what 
process because the decision formation process is also uh, you know, different different methods people use. You know, some use spinning, some may use point pressing. Okay, so based on their expertise in how much thinning they can achieve the final shape, that depends upon them. So now that uncertainty factor is coming. So how to tackle that? How as a designer will make sure that my design, because if I give nominal thickness, no, if I give them 32 mm, okay, and my required thickness for that part, let us say, was 29. What if I've given only 32 mm and the fabricator has got more thinning he, and final shape was 28? How to control that? Anyone? Because we are making assumptions, so there is chances, right? But in design, we cannot be dependent upon the assumption. So Akash is saying, take more. What else we can do? Uh, Satya is also saying, we give more thickness. Uh, Himanshu is also saying, add thickness of addition. Increase nominal thickness, we make. Okay. The point is that whatever thickness I'm giving, finally there is assumption which is coming into picture. Okay. So to control that, now you might have already seen that when I will tell, you will come to know. Yes, Pankaj is absolutely right. We always give the minimum thickness also. Have you seen that in the drawing, guys? If you have seen any drawing of that no, uh, addition, yes, Akash. So we always give the minimum thickness and that is the reason. You know, we are telling that fabricator that, see, this is the nominal thickness which we have suggested. But this is the minimum thickness. So if you think that nominal thickness is not sufficient to achieve this minimum, that is your duty to increase. Right? Because this is what you have to achieve. Because once the inspector will check that shape, you know, after that forming, he will always check that minimum thickness. Making sense? Yes. He will always be worried about the minimum thickness. So if that is not meeting, your condition will get rejected. So nominal thickness just becomes as a indication. And so if the fabricator is expert, he will see the minimum thickness. He will find out what thickness he needs. If the nominal thickness which we have given is not sufficient, then he will take the higher thickness. Uh, no, Satya, we cannot show and definitely it's not going to happen. You will have different thicknesses. Your knuckle thickness will be very the minimum. Your crown will not be normally changed. It will remain what were nominal thickness we have given. And your straight face may end up a little higher because whatever uh, thinning is happening, that material is getting pushed towards straight face. So slightly higher thickness you may get even the skirt area. There won't be any uniform thickness. We cannot do that. Okay, Satya. So the minimum thickness is what we want to control. And that is the required thing. Okay. So now there is a minimum required thickness, which is there for that addition. What is that? What is next? And the minimum stride thickness head after forming. Okay, minimum required and minimum specified, which may be the you know, nominal thickness. So, whatever required thickness, if I'm getting based on my calculation, let us see, I got 28.9. So, I may have some margin. I may not give minimum thickness as 28.9. That is purely as a designer, it is based on us, I can keep minimum as 28.9 also, then in that case, there is nothing in my pocket as a designer. If fabricator is not able to meet this, the addition will get rejected. Or what I can do, I'll 0.1 mm 
I'll take as a margin and specify minimum thickness as 29 or 30, whatever. Generally, we'll not take too much margin because finally cost is going to increase. So it depends upon, you know, like 28.5 I'm getting. Generally, to round off, I'll give 29 as minimum. So in that case, even slightly it goes down. And if it is referred back to us as a designer, we have something to check. We'll check the design. Required is 28.5. Whatever we got is 28.7, let us say. We'll say that it's okay. You know, accept it. Making sense? So that is how you know, it goes in fabrication. We can give tolerance value also. Yes, uh, cost is compromised when we uh, talk about fabrication, uh, manufacturer terms of view. But as a designer, our intention should be to make a completely uh, safe design. That should be our topmost priority, not the cost. Okay, so nominal thickness, specified thickness, and the minimum required thickness. These are the terms which now, now you, I hope you understand. Now let us talk about the thickness calculation, how we calculate. So this is the formula given in UG32, PD divided by 2SE minus 0 0.2P. Okay, for a 2 is to 1 ellipsoidal head. With the same formula, we can derive the P also. When we calculate maximum allowable working pressure, we can write this same formula in this manner. But now the thing to note down here is this condition is applicable when your TS divided by L. What is L? L is the crown radius, inside crown radius. And what is that value? for an ellipsoidal head, that is 0.9 times D. We just saw that, right? Yes, Akash, absolutely right. So that is the first condition. Second is 2 is to 1 ratio. The formula is applicable only for 2 is to 1. The 0.9 times crown and 17% of knuckle. If we have any different ratio, then this formula will not work. Making sense? So valid for this one. So Arbaz, that's what I said. L is, bro, it's a defined V uh, in ellipsoidal head. It's it is the crown radius. You know, if you see the figure also, it is indicated L here for ellipsoidal head is crown radius. Okay, because in shell we have used different terms for L, so don't get confused with that. Great. Now, what if, see, if you have all these things meeting, then we are safe. Okay. We can follow that UG32. What if the conditions are not met? Okay. Have you noticed any time uh, while doing PV light calculation? What generally the thickness formula which is used, whether this is the formula which is used, PD by 2SC, 0.2P. Subban is absolutely right. Uh, you, know, you guys might have noticed that most of the time they will use mandatory appendix. What is the reason? So if even if you are selecting 2 is to 1, they calculate with mandatory appendix. What might be the reason? Because OD what else based on outside dia? There are formulas for outside dia, inside dia. That is a different thing. Factor K, yes, you're right. Factor K, but why? Because that factor K is nothing but your depends upon the ratio, right? Minor and major and minor. So basically, it should give the same value. So why to go for? Rashikar is saying two is to one is not maintained and. 
you know it's really interesting point rashikar can you elaborate why that is that is there why that two is to one is not maintained it's a very important point we are discussing guys so why in pv light we use mandatory appendix formula rather than using ug32 and the interesting point coming is the rashikar uh, like saying two is to one is not maintained what is the reason for that what is the reason for not maintaining two is to one anyone just think little bit even if you don't know you can think knowing is not important here everything is based on logic engineering judgment uh no it's not because we, see, we are doing theoretical calculation so in theory, theory we can do we can maintain two is to one even so we can maintain two is to one in theory akash will discuss about k by 2h ratio okay so the question which has come now that no we are not able to maintain this 2 is to 1 so not maintain that does not mean that in fabrication we are not able to maintain now i'll just little bit elaborate what is your uh, 2 is to 1 it's a major to minor ratio right major to minor when i am calculating major to minor see i'll be making major to minor ratio exactly 2 is to 1 when i'm fabricating during fabrication i have met this 2 is to 1 is met while doing calculation can i use the same id and both ids like major id and minor id or any change i have to do while doing the calculation what change will be required can i use the major and minor which i have made for the fabrication to so just give you a hint do you take the shell id which you have made during fabrication for the calculation do you take that yes corrosion factor guys corrosion has to be removed so if i remove the corrosion you know, major id i i will have to add now don't ask why removing means add minor again id plus ca now this ratio does not becomes 2 is to 1 getting it guys are you able to get it so even though 2 is to 1 i have taken but because after adding corrosion lines it becomes slightly different than 2 is to 1 and that is the reason we have to go for the mandatory appendix one formula okay hope that was interesting great now so that is what we are discussing here that if the conditions are not met we have to go to appendix one even for ts greater than tl so the ratios which if you are not meeting we can always you know follow mandatory appendix 1 dash 4c there you can see that k factor is coming okay now what is this k factor this is how that k factor is defined okay so if you just You no, know, put two is two and d by two h. You no, know? so what it will become if for two is two one ratio, what my d by two h will be? D is the inside radius, h is the depth. So what d by two h will be in terms of value? It's simple question. For two is two one. what this term d by 2h will mean 0.25 i'm not talking about h i'm talking about d by 2h ratio 
Is it one, Vivek? It's very simple. What is D here? D is the major axis. What is 2H? H is from here to here. 2H, if I say it's double, that becomes minor axis. So major divided by minor, what that is for 2 is to 1. D. 1, major is 2, minor is 1, and 2 is to 1 ratio. So finally, it's 2. Guys, are you able to follow? I'm not talking about the k value, guys. I'm just talking about d by 2h. What might d by 2h actually means major to minor? Right, guys? Everyone clear about that? D by 2H, you know, just saying my major to minor, I'm just writing in terms of math, right? So major divided by minor, that is 2, right? So now if I keep 2 here, 2 square, that will become 4 plus 2, 6. So one uh, 6 divided by 6 becomes 1, okay? So that is the reason for the earlier UG32 formula, you saw it as one so it, we don't have to mention anything for any other ratio we need to find that k value if you don't want to calculate you have a table also given i'll just show you that table also you can use that also so here also if you see for d by 2h for two value we have one okay so if i'm maintaining this K, if, even if I'm ignoring, that will not take part in the calculation, right? For any other value, I need to calculate, okay? It, it, this is very important. Use the nearest value of D by 2H. Interpolation is unnecessary. You don't have to do interpolation. Whatever D by 2H you are getting, the nearest you can take and do the calculation. That's what code says. Okay, if you are using this table. Okay, so simple. So if I have any other ratio, I can follow this. I hope you understood this part. Stay tuned for more videos related to other clauses.